Okay, hello and welcome to all of our guests and listeners. My name is Alex and I work with the community team here at Caduceus. So I am delighted today to be here with um, some great speakers. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, before we actually get into the questions and things, I would uh, love to give our speakers the opportunity to introduce themselves. Um, you know, uh, we've actually got guests from Now Launch, Gagarin and Mintpad with us today. Uh, Sakura, maybe if I could ask you to start off, introduce um, a little bit about yourself and Dow Launch, that would be brilliant. Yeah, sure, definitely. So I'm Sakura and I'm founder of Dow Launch and we started Dow Launch since 2020. And we basically like uh, integrate with like Mautchain, Eastern, Binance, Mautchain, Apple Launch, and also other like EBN chain as well. And then we basically like uh, since helping like a startup launch and as uh, fundraising like see uh since 2020 and we have held like more than 20 projects and then more than raised like, 12 millions as well now and then uh, yeah so we uh, like see keep looking for like a good project also like see like thinking about like how to like see uh helping the project for the uh, smooth launch and also they are uh, like see basically like to market strategy and they not also like see uh even as well as the uh, like see marketing strategy also like uh, like a structure of the business itself and then uh yes my like the introduction about Dolan. so basically we are helping fundraising and also like see connecting with like investors oh, thank you sakura um, i'm sure i'll be looking forward to hearing about that uh in a little bit more detail as we go on through through the ama today uh, Dimitri, if I could pass it over to yourself and get a little bit more information about Gagarin, if I said that correctly. Hello, guys. My name is Dimitri. I'm head of research at Gagarin Launchpad. As a Launchpad, we've been working more than a year and we've launched more than 30 projects from the open market. And uh, that's we have uh, some experience in that and uh, we are ready to share with the projects. That's it. Amazing. Again, looking forward to hear more as we go on through the AMA today. Uh, James, please pass on to yourself at Mintpad. That would be great. Thank you. So uh, my name is James. I'm one of the founders of Mintpad, which is an NFT launchpad platform. So we're building tools to uh, enable, what can I say, non-coders to easily deploy NFT collections uh, on the blockchain. So we currently are supporting uh, a handful uh, EVM-based chains already in our NFT wizard tool that we just launched. Uh, we have been building uh, our backend platform uh, for almost nine months now, and we are in the stage where we are up currently upgrading everything to our V2 version, uh, which is uh, planned to be released quarter three this year so we have another three months to work we've been working very hard uh, on this platform because uh, we have been quite limited in terms of resources and coders uh, so far but uh, we are progressing quite fast now and we are finally seeing the light of the uh, in the end of the tunnel uh, i would say so that's that's it great stuff Great stuff. Really looking forward to going through this all today. Uh, I'm not sure if I actually missed this at the start, so I will mention again the topic discussion of today is uh, 2023 crypto market trends, opportunities and suggestions. So we've got some great speakers here today to talk about this. Um, and just in case you are new here, I'll give you a brief introduction on Caduceus as well. Of course, Caduceus is a layer one blockchain dedicated to metaverse development offering up to 100,000 TPS and basically non-existent gas fees, all powered by decentralized edge rendering. Of course, to find out more about Caduceus, please do follow our socials, join our community and look out for the latest news and updates. Also be sure to uh, check out all the socials of our speakers and their projects today. So as we move forward, are we all ready to get into to some questions, guys? Sure. Yes. Perfect, let's have a little right look. Yeah, exciting, let's see what we've got. So again, um, Sakura, maybe if we could start off with oh, yourself. Yes. Um, the first question that I actually have from you is, what areas in the current crypto market are showing the strongest performance? And do these areas actually have the potential for sustainable development in the future? Yes. So the, yeah, right now, like see, after like some Trump airdrop and everyone talking about what is the next airdrop, what is the next voice trend is going to be the key EVM. So the ZK EVM is uh, basically, I think, is the most of, like ideal solution for the Ethereum blockchain like rollup solutions. 
So ZKVM is generally is going to be the host species and the data in this year, and also the account abstraction. I think that's two things to onboard new users. So we are working on that too as well. So basically we can implement ZKVMs and also account abstraction. We can implement like the easy process for web 2 users to onboard on our platforms. And uh, yeah, that's two topics. Yeah, it's going to be very hot and uh, everyone's, everyone's like they're working on it right now. So. Mm. No, thank you. No, thank you. Some, some, some good points there. Um, Dimitri, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I will mention as well, as we go through the AMA, if you need me to repeat the question at any point, guys, please feel free to, but uh, just let me know and I will. But uh, if I could pass over to yourself, Dimitri. Yeah, I'm ready to answer. In my opinion, it's difficult to pinpoint specific areas in the current crypto market that are showing the strongest performance, as it depends on how one defines performance. From the perspective of a launch pad, it seems that there is no particular area that stands out more than others. The boom in DeFi do something to earn GameFi and other sectors has somewhat subsided and the distribution has become more even. What seems to be more important in today's market is the quality and strength of a projects rather than its specific area. Projects that are performing well generally have a ready-to-use product, strong marketing, a large community, and other factors contributing to their success. It's also important to note that there are still thematic trends in the market, and it appears that AI is currently experiencing a surge in interest. Ultimately, the potential for sustainable development in the future will depend on the individual projects and their ability to deliver value and innovation to their respective sectors and adopt to the ever-changing market, market conditions. It shows that the market is evolving and maturing, so instead of focusing solely on the area of projects belongs to, it's crucial to evaluate its overall strengths and potential for long-term success. Thanks, Dimitri. No, no, again, some really great points there. Um, nice to touch up on the on the AI trend again that's going at the moment. We've had a couple of meta talks featured yeah. around that recently. You know, it's it's obviously a the big one at the moment. Uh, James, if I could pass the same question over to yourself, that would be brilliant. Yeah, uh, well, um, the crypto space can be a bit overwhelming at times, of course, but there are definitely some areas that are showing serious promise for the future. And like Dimitri said, for example, the uh, there've been a lot of buzz around projects related to AI lately, uh, and people are getting excited about the potential for these projects to drive innovation and progress across a variety of different industries. So uh, with that said, it's also important to know that not everything in the crypto world is perfect. Uh, for example, the NFT market has definitely had some challenges to overcome since you know I'm I'm mainly in the NFT space and it's our passion. Uh, so we have been very closely fo been following the NFT market. Uh, and particularly when it comes to liquidity and fraudulent activity like scams, et cetera. So as an investor, it's important for us to feel, uh, for investor and for us, it's important to feel confident that the projects are supporting, that we are supporting are trustworthy and reliable which is why we, we are seeing more and more demand for transparency and accountability in the, in the crypto space lately. But despite these challenges, I truly believe uh, that there is still a lot of potential for sustainable development in the NFT market and crypto market, particularly for projects that can demonstrate a long-term availability and earn the trust of the investors, by like KYC, for example as we continue to explore the, the dynamic and ever-changing world of crypto, we need to stay alert and thoughtful in our investment decisions while also being open to the potential of new and emerging technologies, of course. Thank you very much, James. And, and no, great, some, some, some really great points there again. Um, you know, really looking forward to going through the rest of the questions with you guys. Now, the second question that's come in, um, I think actually between the three of you, you actually touched up on a little bit, especially to do with the sort of trends and so on. However, there's a sort of second part to the question, which I think would definitely be a very interesting one. So, um, you know, what important trends do you see in the current crypto market, which we may have touched on a bit, but also what is the current state of the market right now? Mm -hmm. Off for you, Sakura, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> 
So uh, yeah, so I uh, like the uh, ZTEV and also like the when it talks about our kind of instructions. So still like crypto market is like the product for the like uh, basically specific person like the basically like the, to using like the what well, crypto basically have to install MetaMask. You have to keep like the secrets uh, correctly properly, but the uh, a lot of people basically doesn't know how to like uh, keep the secret secret crazy proper or something, and then. So long as like the requires users to keep the phrases properly, then so it's right now it's still like the early phases, and then like so to bring it to the next phases to mass adoption. So we need to like more easy to use like the the crypto itself. So and then like uh, yeah, so that kind of instruction is going to be the core like C tools to like see bring to the mass adoption. It's always say like that, but the it's still like like uh, still in the process, still in the like see like early process right now, and then. Uh, so I think it's the next big thing so what the crypto market needs to solve is how we can bring it to the mass adoptions. Still, we are not ready yet. And then there are a lot of problems that we need to solve. And so I hope it's going to be much better in the when we're going to see the next bullish market and the next like two, three years later. So yeah, uh, still we are like preparing right now. Yeah, all the crypto players. No, no, great answers again. I think you've got... Um some real good points there in sort of mass adoption and where we are with everything at the moment. You know, I think the people in the space can really see the potential uh, similar to what James touched on earlier. I'm big into my NFTs as well. And, you know, we're only just really scratching the surface of what they, I believe they will be used for in the future. Um, but when it comes to mass adoption, it all does seem quite complicated for the Web2 person at the moment, doesn't it? And I think that that's a big step for the space over the next few years is making things um, you know, more user friendly and easier accessible for these people. So, no brilliant answer, Zachary. Thank you, uh, Dimitri. If I could pass the same question over to yourself. I agree with previous opinion, but I'd like to add that, for example, regarding to the device sector, it seems that we haven't seen many new innovative exchanges, farming, lending platforms, or complex bridges lately. It appears that the market is currently focused on stabilizing and refining existing solutions rather than introducing groundbreaking new ones. Technologically speaking, the crypto current market the crypto market is rapidly evolving and integrating blockchain technology has become much more affordable. For example, connecting and processing wallets has been simplified to copying and pasting a few lines of library code, making it easy to support various network and wallets. You may be uh, witnessing the transition from niche driven solutions to more widely accessible tools as evidenced by the simplicity of the development tools. Personally, I anticipate a year of altcoins as numerous strong projects have emerged such as Ketuchaos, Aptos and TOM. There are several evident technological trends such as reduced finality, increased scalability and of course ZK proofs. These technologies are here to stay. The question now is which technological platform will be the king of the hill? Whether it's EVM-based blockchains or alternative solutions. I believe this year provide greater clarity on this matter. As for non-technological trends, I expect that we will see a successful implementation of CBDCs this year and increase in AI integration within the blockchain possibly even at protocol level and growing trends towards specialized chains. We have seen numerous change tailored um, for specific purposes such as corporate use or metaverse applications. It will be interesting to see how these developments unfold and impact to the overall crypto industry. Thank you, Dimitri. Again, it's um, amazing points to touch on there, especially with the um sort of who's going to be king of the hill and maybe seeing a little bit more about how that unfolds this year. Um, and the CBDC stuff, obviously, is all going to be very interesting and uh, something I'm sure we're all going to be keeping a close eye on over uh, uh, over this year and the next, especially, I'm sure. Uh, James, if I could pass over to yourself. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, I mean, the crypto market is always changing and evolving, right? It's always been since day one. Uh, there are always new ideas popping up. And this is actually what is actually driving the entire space for us. And there are definitely some interesting trends emerging. And one one thing that's uh, really caught my attention lately uh, have been, first of all, AI, uh, and also what Web3 can do for NFTs in the future. Uh, 
uh, and also right now, of course. Uh, in the past six months or so, we have also seen a lot more volumes compared to the end of last years. Uh, and because we had kind of a bear market last year, uh, and this is, of course, very great for investors. And I think when we have these kind of high volumes, it doesn't need to be a bull market, but as long as we keep the volumes up, people will keep evolving and keep inventing new stuff in this space, because this is always how, we, how it has been uh, in the past. And I think this is something that will always continue. And while there have definitely been some projects that were overhyped or inflated, I'm optimistic about the over overall stability of the market. Uh, I mean, even blue ships like BTC have experienced some ups and downs uh, over the time and also in the past uh, four or five years ago. But the av 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 availability uh, of liquidity is still there. There are still investors in the market watching the market closely every day. And it's going to be it's going to make it easier for people to trade uh, their tokens uh, and to for example, if you invest in a project, it's going to be easier for you to, to trade if the volume is there. And also for the NFTs, of course. There are always going to be challenges in the crypto world, of course, whether it's related to transparency, to transparency or to regulations. But overall, I think there is a lot of potential for growth and innovation in this space. So as we move forward, it's important for all of us to stay informed about emerging trends and developments. And and to make careful, informed decisions about our investments. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Uh, make sure you do your own research, make sure you make the right decisions. Exactly. Some, really, uh, some really important points from James there. So thank you very much, guys. Really getting some great answers on today's uh, episode of Meta Talk. So our speakers really know what they're talking about here today. Um, Moving on to the next question, Zachary, if I can again aim this one at yourself. What areas are crucial for long-term market development in 2023, in your opinion? Um, you know, what areas hold the most opportunities for investors? Uh, in terms of the industry, I think it's, uh, yeah, if I as an investor, I'm going to make investment, especially around, around ZK rollup, ZK EVM like ecosystem. Uh, ZK EVM like C is like ZK think like raising tons of money, but the basic product is just showed up very like, recently, like a couple of months ago, uh, one month ago, like a lot, last month or something. And then uh, recently, I believe it's a consensus also joined this like the ecosystem, launched their blockchain as well. And then, so I believe there are lots more like the product going to adapt, going to integrate it to EVM in the future. I mean, this year, so especially this year. So, yeah, I think uh, uh, I probably explore more the product in the like CZ EVM system as for well, like, I think it's uh, more money, just simply like a lot of money, like they going coming so, like around the field. So, I think it's a bit, yeah, it's a good to explore around the X system, maybe, I think. Of course, it's like other like blockchain and also like see, I take it up as well, but yeah. As an industry, yeah, yeah, I think is, uh, I'm interested in the field right now. Thank you, Sakura, for your insight on that. Yeah. Dimitri, do you have anything to, to add to that or a different opinion? Yeah, I'd like to add, the market has changed significantly in recent years. Many of us remember the times when participating in any IDO would result in impressive returns or when small investments in farming would yield substantial profits. Nowadays, the situation is different. Projects often fail to deliver high returns and refunds are becoming more common. Considering retail investors, I would advise them to focus on individual projects rather than market areas looking for those with strong fundamentals, experienced team and clear roadmaps, and use trans trusted and reliable tools and products as the market is currently ripe with scams and fraudulent activities. Investors should be cautious and verify the credibility of the projects they are interested in. In the current environment, prioritizing the security of investments uh, and the preservation of funds should be the primary concern. Investors should approach the market conservatively without expecting life-changing projects and returns. Instead of chasing short-term profits, it might be wise to consider holding tokens of promising projects for the long term. 
now could be an opportune time to start believing in the potential of these projects and their tokens by focusing on solid projects with strong fundamentals and utilizing trusted platforms investors can maximize their chances of success in the long-term market development in 2023 and beyond again you know from from my point of view that's great advice whenever i look to purchase into an nft project there's a sort of number of things that i look at even when you're sort of buying a you know a coin or whatever project you're going into but more frequently for myself i'd say yeah. nfts and um, i think you hit some really great points there you know looking into the team looking into the roadmap and um, the community what they've built so far how big their ideas you know and really just doing your research and due diligence um, before you're making any investments so um definitely want to echo that Thank you very much, Dimitri. Now, uh, James, anything to add to this? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, as we look forward uh, ahead to the future of the crypto market, I think there are a few things that we need to keep in mind. Uh, first of all, we need to be innovative. It's not enough just to build a cool uh, AI bot or making a beautiful NFT collection or build some trendy technology. I think we need to think outside of the box more and identify areas where we can truly make a difference in the world. I mean, in the real world and maybe bring in a web three to the real world use cases. So for investors, this means looking for uh, nothing. I mean, for, for, for projects, not only hype projects and also focusing more on the areas that they believe in. Uh, by doing this, we can help to drive long-term growth and development in the crypto market while also potentially seeing significant returns on our investments because that's very important because if we don't make any returns on our investments, we are going to become a little bit irritated and less, what can I say, cautious. We also have to be realistic because investing in crypto isn't always easy and straightforward. There are definitely risks and challenges challenges involved and we need to stay informed and engaged and we want to make if we want to make the most of our investments overall i think the future of crypto market is incredibly tight and full of potential uh, by working together and staying focused on innovations we can help to shape the future of this dynamic and ever-changing industry Brilliant answer, James. Brilliant. And um, again, another great point there. Well, some great points, but one that I'd like to echo again is actually looking into projects, especially for people that are new and maybe listening and new in the space. Um, you know, between the advice that all the speakers have given today, you've got a, a little bit of guidelines there. But, um, you know, especially sort of looking at projects that aren't just hype and actually have a use case or will actually look into change something uh, in the world or the, you know, the way that we live our lives or do our work. Is, is always going to be uh, a good sign and uh, uh, a tick in the checklist of the do your own research for me. So again, thank you all. That was some great answers. We've got time for one more question today. So um, if I can put it to yourself again, Sabro, what advice do you have for investors and entrepreneurs who want to enter web, web free? So it's quite a good follow on from the one we spoke about a minute ago, maybe some similar points um, over all of our summaries and things. So I guess let's just try our best to summarize this uh, as best we can. What advice do you have for investors and entrepreneurs that who want to enter web free as a newcomer? Yeah, so it's right now is after like see yeah bullish market going and then it's time to like a good build and also like right now and the, like more venture capital, more developers coming here and the more competitive right now. So and then yeah, it's really a good time to build like a dive into right now. And then uh, so yeah, so before like the 2017 or 2018, there is no like a venture capital who's gonna make an investment in Web3. But right now, a lot of venture capital are interested into like applying the money to the like setups, and they said of that we become more like competitive. But the basically the company like they who got like they maybe dominate the next like bullish market is basically preparing right now. So the whole like, is it's best time to like dive into right now. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Safra. Dimitri, anything to add or echo? Sure. Investors, I have already mentioned. Uh, we have. Don't we expect, a little bit, don't expect yeah. extremely fast returns yeah. and uh, be selective uh, in mm. be selective in projects. 
consider supporting projects for the long term and uh, carefully choose platform for investing and projects to invest in. Study the project matter. Crypto and investment are not about exploiting multiplier accounts for whitelisting. Uh, I hope we are talking not about Arbitrum at the moment. Uh, the smartest will win. And for entrepreneurs and projects, uh, things get more interesting. I have some tips that remain relevant over time as common mistakes often recur. Mm, take care about community. There are the only people who are genuinely interested in your success. Review your economics to create a scarcity of project tokens upon listing. Offer market models for monetizing your projects and token utility, which reduce the price pressure on the token rate and allocate fewer, allocate fewer tokens to the project budget to maintain a stable price over time. Don't reinvent the wheel. Avoid developing what was already been created by others. Um, access the costs, potential risks and advantages for using ex existing services and white label solutions. It uh, reduces um, fees significantly. And um, work only with uh, trusted counterparties. Seek advice from service aggregators and consultants. And remember to play for the long term and consider listing your project on decentralized exchanges. It's my personal opinion. No, I'm a good one at that, in, in my opinion. So, no, thank you, Dimitri. Some great answers there. Um, Don't if I could hand it over to yourself. Yep. Thanks. Uh, I don't have a very long answer on this one because I think I covered most of it before. Yeah. But I think yeah. I think that uh, in getting into the world of Web3 as an investor or entrepreneur, I think that first of all, you need to look for projects that combine blockchain technology with real world opportunities. Because I think that is really what is going to be long term in this space. Uh, don't jump on the hyped ones just because they are hyped, because it's just a quick buck in your pocket or you lose everything. Uh, I think you should keep your eye on long-term potential Web3 projects for now and be focused on projects that are making a real impact. Even if you do that, I think that you will be fine in this space because uh, I my, myself have done a lot of mistakes by investing in hype projects uh, with with a use case that someone else have built before, like Dimitri said. Uh, I don't think that that's the way to enter the Web3 uh, space. I think that you should do what I said, try to find Web3 projects that are really building real world opportunities. Amazing. That's thank it. you. Thank you again. Some great answers. Um, I'm not sure how much we touched upon it, but the only thing that maybe I could think to add to that is definitely have your wits about you in this space. You know, if you're from the Web 2 space coming over to the Web 3 space, there's definitely some things that might catch you by surprise. You know, there's can be, unfortunately, at this point in time, a lot of scammers and things in the industry, a lot of people looking to catch you out. Um, but generally, yeah, you know, just do research, keep keep on top of everything. You know, one of the things I think that helped me quite a lot is researching sentiment in the market and things like that. The whole, um, you know, greedy and when there's blood on the streets um, and when there's greed, you know, to do the exact opposite of the fear and greed indicator, essentially. So, um, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for your answers today. Really appreciate it. I hope all of our listeners really enjoyed episode six. Um, again, Please do follow all the projects of our speakers if you haven't already um, and make sure to follow Caduceus notifications on to make sure you never miss out on the next episode of Meta Talk. Um, and we look forward to seeing you all on the next one. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Take care. Thank you, Thank everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a good, good day. Luck.